So here we have a question in which we know something about the production process. Here the machine producing hamburger patties and they're meant to weigh 100 gram each and the process knows we can't produce always exactly 100 gram. It's tuned such that the standard deviation should be 5 grams. Okay, And we also know from past experience that this um, weight of the hamburger patties is normally distributed. So what we know from here is that the, the process is a normal process. So let's call that weight. Let's call that X. Okay, so X is normally distributed with mean 100 and variance 5 squared. Uh, so that is what we know from the information. Now the question. What is the sampling distribution of the total weight of a hamburger packet in uh, so and here we say hamburgers are sold in packets of four so what's the sampling distribution of the total weight of hamburgers in a packet in stating this sampling distribution state carefully what results you're using and any assumptions you make so the important assumption we have to make here is let's answer a is that we are randomly sampling if we want to if we want to figure out anything we have to say well each individual hamburger packy is a random draw from that normal distribution with mean 100 and variance of 25 and if we if we know that we are basically also saying is that the individual the weights of the individual packy patties hamburger patties is independent Okay, so what does that mean? That should we draw uh, one which is perhaps a little larger for the first hamburger, whether the second hamburger we draw is larger than 100 or smaller than 100 is not dependent on the first hamburger being somewhat larger. Uh, so that's what we mean with independence. Okay, so each of those four is drawn from this distribution here. That's sort of the core information. That means the total weight, let's call that T, is calculated as the weight of uh, X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4. So we are drawing four hamburgers. Each of them has a weight and the total weight is just the sum of those. Each of those x's are normally distributed. So here we have a linear combination of normally distributed random variables. And to make that clear, what I can do is I can just put these factors in here. 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 1 times x3 plus 1 times x4. So let's go back. So what is the expected value of t? The expected value of t is just the expected value, the sum of the expected values. Okay. So expected value of x1, x2, x3 and x4. Each of them is 100, so here the result is 400. So what about the variance of t? We know that if we, let me just note that here, if we have a variance, that's a, so that here, a variance of a random variable, which is a combination of random variables. Uh, for instance, I have to use different names, A times P, where P is a random variable, plus B times Q, where Q is a random variable. We know that the variance here is a squared times the variance of p plus b squared times the variance of q plus 2ab times the covariance of p and q. Right, so that's the general way how we combine two, calculate the variance of a linear combination of two random variables. We you're unlikely to ever have seen a formula for four combining four random variables because now we are looking at the 
variance of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. But remember, we have these weights here. 1 times, 1 times, 1 times, 1 times. So these have the role of the A and the, the B here. So you haven't seen a formula which combines 4 and that would contain a lot of these covariance terms. But we assumed that there's independence. That means the covariance is zero and these terms, these entire terms here fall away. All we are left with is these variance terms times that squared factor. So therefore, in this context, this will be one squared, which is just one, times the variance of x1 plus one squared times the variance of x2 plus 1 squared times the variance of x3 plus 1 squared times the variance of x4. Each of these variances is 5 squared, is 25, and therefore we have 4 times 25, and that is 100. So we have the expected value in the variance, Lastly, what is the distribution? So we know t is distributed with an expected value of 400 and a variance of 100. But what is the distribution? Well, each of the x1, x1, x2, x3 and x4 are normally distributed. A linear combination of normally distributed random variables is again a normal distribution. So this is our sampling distribution. So let's move on to part B. Part B. Customer claims that packets of hamburgers are underweight. A trading standards officer is sent to investigate. He selects one packet, possibly investigator would select more than one, but that's a later topic, of four hamburgers and finds that the weight of hamburgers in the packet is 390. Remember, our expected value is 400. What is the probability of a packet weight weighing as little as 390 grams if the machine is set correctly. Do you consider this finding constitutes evidence that the machine has been set to deliver underweight hamburgers? So, what we now want to calculate is we want to calculate the probability that T comes out with a weight of 390 or less. Okay? Now, we know the distribution, t is normally distributed, mean of 400 and variance of 100. We don't have a table for this distribution, so we need to standardize it. Therefore, we're applying our standardization formula. That is the same as set, the standard normal random variable, being smaller or equal to 390 minus the expected value, which is 400, divided by the standard deviation, which is square root of 100, which is 10. So when we calculate that, what we get is probability of z being smaller than negative 1. So those of you who have a bit of experience of working with the standard normal distribution, you already know that this is a probability smaller than 50%, but it's not particularly small. So what we're going to do is we have a little sketch here. We're having a sketching a something which approximately looks like a standard normal distribution. Uh, we know that has a mean of zero, we are at negative one. So we are asking for the size of this area here. We go to our trusted normal table. We find a value of negative one, which is here, negative one, zero, the value is 15.87%. So the area here is 0.1587. That is the probability, 1587. So around 16%. So is that small or large? Well, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is, but 16% is certainly something that you should expect uh, to happen uh, 
um, perhaps around one in every six cases. Okay, so even if the machine is correctly adjusted, around one in every six packages, you should expect the weight to be less than 390.